Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back with another slimline card. <laughs> so for today's card, I'm using some oldie but goodie stamp sets and wafer dies, specifically the All the Thanks stamp set and coordinating wafer dies from CZ Design and the Simon Says Stamp Picture Book Panda wafer die. So this is for this week's color throwdown challenge, which the colors for the challenge are basically like aqua, black, and white. So for the aqua, I pulled out some Simon's Stamp Audrey Blue cardstock. And I have a piece of it in my Misty stamping platform. And I'm lining up a bunch of the sentiments from this big All the Thanks stamp set. And then once I've got everything positioned, I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool on the cardstock. I'm going to brush away the excess and then I'm going to stamp all of these sentiments with clear embossing ink. So I'm going to ink them up with the clear embossing ink, close the lid of my Misty, stamp them onto this cardstock, and then I'm going to coat all of these sentiments with my detail white embossing powder. And once these are coated with the embossing powder, tap off the excess and then I can melt all of these sentiments with my heat tool. So my like thought process with this card was basically using all of these thank you sentiments because they have the coordinating wafer dies which I've raved about this a million times in my videos. I, I really love having coordinating wafer dies with my sentiments. I never thought it would be a thing and never thought it would be something I'd be so um, into but I do. I love it. It just, it's convenience. And I thought with this card, I was like, I wanted the sentiments to be, you know, kind of take the focus with this card because they're so big, you know, and clean and simple. And I love it. So I melted all the, the embossing powder with my heat tool. As always, I tilt it back and forth in the light to make sure everything is smooth, melted, nothing's grainy or anything like that. So I did that. Off camera, I also did some black cardstock with more sentiments, and I'll show that in a minute. And then I pulled out one more of the sentiments from the All the Thanks set. This is a solid sentiment. It's like the little speech bowl one. And I thought this would be really cute to stamp on white cardstock and use Audrey Blue ink. So that's what I did. And I ended up stamping it twice just to kind of deepen the color a little bit. Um... So yeah, stamp that a couple times. And then while I still had the white cardstock, I also pulled out the uh, punny sentiment set from Simon. They had released this, again, this was all released a while ago, but they'd released this one to kind of coordinate with a bunch of the picture book animal wafer dies. So just a bunch of sentiments, you know, with plays on words with different animals. So I pulled out this one because it's like, you're pandastic. <laughs> I can't resist a punny sen sentiment. I don't know. I like them. And plus it just will tie everything together. So I stamped that on the white cardstock with some Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. And then here I've got my black cardstock, which is smaller sentiments from the All the Thanks set that I also had white heat embossed. So I've got all these sentiments, tons of them. And then I'm going to use the coordinating wafer dies for all the large sentiments. So I line them all up and I'm going to tape them down with washi tape. And then all of the smaller sentiments, I'm going to die cut with wafer dies from the nested banners wafer die set because that was just perfect. The other one I would have could have used was the essential sentiment strips uh, wafer dies, but the small ones from the nested banners were just perfect for all these sentiments. So I die cut everything all in one go. And then for my little panda, I die cut him from some uh, thermal web flock sheets. I've done videos in the past and I've done videos specifically with this panda that I've used the black and the white because it was just, it's just perfect. It's like it's meant to be. <laughs> so what I did is after I die cut the black and the white flock sheets, I used the negative and that's what you saw me trace onto some cardstock that I then cut out just rough cut out inside the line, just to give me something to adhere the pieces to. Um, in previous picture book animal or whatever videos, um, I've shown different ways of adhering these together. Um, a lot of times I'll just do it on copy paper and then just trim it out with scissors after everything's adhered. Um, whatever floats your boat. With this, I used the cardstock and then the negative part, the pencil, etc., just to give it a little bit more... Um, 
more, I guess, stability because I want to pop this up with foam tape. So I adhered all the little die cut pieces of the flock to that cardstock. And then for the eyes and nose, I had die cut them just from black cardstock, adhered them into place, and then I used a white jelly roll pen for the eyes. And then I pulled out a black glazed jelly roll pen and did that on the nose. And I'll just show here. It just gives it that little, that little subtle, you know, bit of shine to the nose that is so cute. And I'll show it again at the end of the video as well. So at the beginning of the video, I had laid out all the wafer dies just to give myself an idea of how this was going to work. And I'd taken a picture of it with my phone because of course I forgot by the time I get to this point, I would have forgot where I'd laid everything out and it would have taken twice as long. So I was using my phone, the picture as reference to line everything kind of back up again. And then I'm like adding in all of those little companion sentiments that I had heat embossed in the black cardstock as well as that little punny one. And then a couple of sentiments I'm going to save for the inside of the card. So I've just got everything laid out here on my, what will be my card front. And my card front is just slightly smaller than what my card will be. So it's roughly three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. Um, normally in most of my videos, I don't provide exact measurements because more often than not, I don't measure. I just, I'm eyeballing it with A2 cards, etc. But with slimline cards, I'm trying to provide the measurements just because there's no exact measurement. I've mentioned this before. There is no standard measurement per se with slimline cards um, because they can vary. Just sometimes they're this size, like three and a half by eight and a half. And then at other times they can be, you know, four by nine, you know. So this was about three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. I adhered all the sentiments in the panda with some 3D foam squares. And then to kind of fill in some of those gaps amongst it, pulled another oldie but goodie favorite. This is the Mini Hearts wafer die from Simon that I bought, goodness, like six years ago, something. <laughs> Still a favorite. So then I die cut the Audrey Blue and some black cardstock with those hearts. And then I just use those to kind of fill in the gaps. And I adhered them into place with craft tacky glue. And I just used my embellishment wand to pick up all those little hearts and put them into place. So then I went back added a couple more just to kind of finish everything off. Plus the hearts I wanted regardless of, you know, filling in the gaps. I just thought it'd be cute to go with the panda and the thank you, you know, the feel of the card. So the card front's now done. Now it's time for the card base. My card base is seven inches by eight and a half inches and I'm scoring it at three and a half. So it'll be a three and a half inch by eight and a half inch slimline card. So I scored that with my bone folder and my little um, score buddy there. And then was kind of lining up the card front and realized the card base just wasn't doing it for me. I needed to add just a little bit more. So I pulled out my, again, oldie but goodie favorite. This is the My Favorite Things black and white stripes pattern paper. At this point, I was doing this fairly late in the evening and I wasn't thinking. <laughs> and I'm trimming down both these papers and I turned this other diagonal stripe one when I before I cut it but I'm gonna make this work you need to make sure the, the lines are all going in the same direction when you're cutting it down it does make things easier so I trimmed down uh, a couple of those pieces to three and a half inches and I also had a random strip I've said this before I keep all the scraps of this pattern paper like I've been using this now since they released it whenever it was a couple years ago or however long ago um, I keep every scrap of this because it always comes in handy. So this is where I discovered that the stripes were going the different, like the wrong way on the second piece of paper, but I was still able to make it work. <laughs> so I'm going to adhere the first piece to my card base because this pattern paper is six by six inches. So it's not going to cover obviously a slimline card. So you either have to get creative and line them up like I'm doing here or you could do things like adhere the pattern paper and then have like say a border of cardstock and then have characters on top of it or images, whatever. Like there's ways to, you know, make the slimline cards work with some of our supplies that were not, you know, geared towards slimline. So I figured out how to line the stripes up with the second piece. I just had to turn it the other direction. And then I'm going to adhere this, making sure I line up those stripes so that once everything's adhered down, you can almost barely see the seam between the two pieces of paper and then I can just flip over the card base here and then I just use scissors to trim off all of the piece that's hanging off that of course goes back in with the package because I can use that on a future card. So now that I've got my pattern paper 
um, adhered to the card base, I can then adhere my card front to the card base. And I'm just using, again, Craft Tacky Adhesive for that. So after I get the card front adhered, I can then adhere those two little strips that I trimmed down. Same thing. I trim them down to the same width so that I can line them up on the inside of the card. So this time again, I was making sure <laughs> that I had the stripes going in the right direction. So everything lined up, which it did. So I um, just layered these on top. Sometimes I'll like butt them up almost against each other. It just depends with things like, like this is one of the easiest things to line up. If you're working with pattern papers with more, you know, florals or just different designs, it could get a little more difficult. But at the same time, it just kind of reminds me, and it's been years, like it's been over 20 years, um, using wallpaper. <laughs> Although wallpaper has come back. I, that's a whole side. I'm not going into that. Um, but yeah, lining up pattern paper is kind of the same idea as when you're lining up wallpaper. You know, you got to find that little spot in the pattern to match everything up. So I adhered the pattern paper on the inside of the card. And then I adhered the remaining bits of those sentiments. And then um, that actually finished off the card. No splatter, no bling. I know, shocker. But it would have just overwhelmed. This is still a pretty busy card regardless. And then for the envelope, I used the Trinity Stamps Slimline Envelope Wafer Die Set, which I'll have a link to, and some Doodlebug pattern paper that was in a very similar color. So I made my little coordinating envelope to go with this stamp set or, you know, card design. And then that was it. So as always, I will have links below the video to my blog post. I will have a link to the color throwdown challenge in my blog post. And then I'll have a supply list with links to everything I use. So you can check that out in the description box below the video if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.